Hello everyone, this is JD Calderon and this is Indie Comics Explained, where I do reviews and talk about the industry of comics. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about CODA, Volume 2, and CODA is written by Simon Spurrier, illustrated by Matthias Bergara, it's being produced by Boom Studios, and the story surrounds... Um, the protagonist, his name is Hum, and he's a bard, and he's a bit of a miscreant, and he is very desperate. Uh, like I said, this is the second volume in this series. The first volume was very good. This volume is not much different. It's actually very, very good. Um, this particular world was at one time rife with magic, and something occurred. Uh, I think they called it the Quench, and this happen and it stripped all the magic from the planet but there is still some around and hum is desperate to find as much of it as he can to help save the wife save the life of his wife circa who's cursed so he's out there doing what he can to get as much of the get as much magic as he can in his hands and during this he goes through all of these wild adventures uh, there's this uh, giant city that's being pulled by a giant, and it's literally traveling across uh, continents, being pulled by this giant, and they feed it magic. And it's the only way to keep it running. It's also the only way to get into the city. If you get come into the city, you have to pay tribute with magic. So uh, that's how they feed the city. Um, the artwork is uh, pretty dense, gorgeous-looking work. Uh, reminds me very much of uh, Esteban Moroto, if you've ever seen his work. It's very, very reminiscent of that. Um, Esteban primarily worked in black and white. But, you know, this this is very reminiscent of that. His style is just, uh, you know, very, very European in feel and look. Um, my only complaint about this book is that the font is probably a little small. Uh, smaller than I like um, and I think the, probably the best way to um, to be to combat that would be to reproduce this book larger because I think to see the artwork I think it just requires so much more I would just love to see this work just produced larger I think the artist I don't know if he's European it wouldn't surprise me if they told me he is and that he's probably accustomed to his work being printed at a much larger size because there's a lot going on in these pages and sometimes it's a little difficult to see it um, at this size I mean you can obviously sit down and study it and that's you know what, what I like to do but I think it'd be a lot easier if it was just a lot bigger you I think it would be a much more enjoyable reading uh, experience but um, and that's it for code a great book Produced by Boom Studios. Looking forward to the third volume. Um, I don't know how long Simon Spurrier and Mateus Bergera are going to keep it going. Uh, I'm sure there's an ending somewhere in the future. Uh, which is something I, I appreciate and I enjoy. I actually like stories that come with endings. Uh, my own story, The Oswald Chronicles, uh, which is currently on the Kickstarter. There is an ending. It does. It's going to take a while to get to it. It's probably... You know, going to be a, a, in in the realm of 70 to 80 issues to get there. But there is a definitive ending. I do have an ending to the story. Um, and I'm working. I'm actually, I haven't written it yet, but I do know what it is. And I'm working towards that ending. So, you know, but it's something I do appreciate. And I know um, in the future, the next time I come up with something, I probably won't... Uh, make the story quite as lofty so it'll be a little bit more compressed but for now I have what I have and I'm you know enjoying it for what it is um, something I wanted to talk about other than just a review is not so much Tall Tales which is this is my other comic that uh, I produce uh, and this is uh, illustrated by Daphne Lage my wife and partner in crime and this is the first issue of our comic and this one I can hold open and uh, show off a little bit more seeing as I own the copyright it's okay <laughs> um, and one of the things I wanted to discuss was um, 
price point. Someone had brought up today on Facebook, they asked a question, how is it that you figure out a good price point for a comic book? And there are a number of different ways. The best way I always find is to, you have to figure out what are your core costs, you know, and that comes down to what does the artwork cost you? What is the, um, and that's all of the artwork. That's if you're hiring a penciler, an inker, a colorist, you know, a letterer, so on and so forth. You know, where, where are the points where you can cut back? You know, I, I do my own lettering. Daphne does her own lettering. She's actually the illustrator on this book, so there's no one being paid uh, per page rate. So, uh, you know, whatever profits we make on it, we just we just split it. Um, the other thing is, is uh, what does printing cost you? You know, I, this particular book um, is listed at five ninety five. Now, the reason for that is that we're digitally printing these, so these are, these are not offset. Uh, these are um, print on demand. So, the big difference between those two systems, offset, you could probably get a book like this, um, maybe on <clears throat> maybe not on as good as paper. Like we could probably get something printed on uh, some inferior stock but decent good quality uh, probably for about uh, 30 cents a book maybe maybe even cheaper depending on the stock we use the printer we use uh, but we would probably have to order 3,000 of them at the moment we're not selling 3,000 books so we would end up with like you know a mountain of these books if that was the case POD though or print on demand offers you to print less books but at a much higher cost so instead of it being 30 cents a book I'm probably paying around 2 210 maybe even 230 per book depending on the thickness of the book 24 pages 32 pages it, it, you know the more pages obviously the the more expensive it's gonna be and the reason um, it's 595 is if I give if I sell it to a retailer I'm going to give them half off so it's 595 so that's $2.98 roughly if I'm paying two ten, I'm making eighty cents on the book. I'm not making killer money on it, but you do want to make some money on it. Now, if the case, you know, we we also sell these on Kickstarter. We make a little bit more profit on that. The people on Kickstarter, a little bit, uh, you know, the people who back us are uh, very generous and they understand that they're supporting the books and they're supporting us and they're helping us make these books come to life. So we're very fortunate with that. But getting back to the subject. Pretty much in the past, um, the old uh, thought was uh, 10 cents a page. So if you had a 32 page book, you know, you're looking at about $3. I think it's probably moved up to probably about 15 cents. So 30 page book, a 32 page book, you're looking at about 450, 480. You know, we've bumped it up to five ninety five. You know, uh, being indie guys, we just don't have a choice. Um, when you talk about companies like Marvel and DC, honestly, I'll be honest with you, I think they charge four ninety five and five ninety five for their books because they can. I know they don't have the issue that I have with uh, not being. You know, they print millions of books, um, probably monthly, if you added up their entire line. And I guarantee you, whichever printer. Um, has that contract they're getting a sweet deal Marvel is for that printing they're probably printing and then I've seen their books recently <laughs> the paper they're printing on is not great paper and they're not even most of the times the interior paper is the same as the cover stock so you don't even get like a better cover stock on those things which is really terrible and the interior paper is just not that great uh, it's usually akin to uh, circular paper that you'll see um, supermarkets give away. You know, they, they sometimes they have newsprint and they also have this glossy stock that they uh, print the circulars on. And then sometimes I think that's the same stuff that Marvel is printing on. And to be pro honest with you, is the stuff is just not good paper. At least not for comics, I, would, I feel. Um, I mean, and they're probably only paying 20 cents uh, per book. And for them to charge five bucks for a book, they'll tell you that their core costs are way higher. I'm sure they are. I mean, they're paying professional artists and professional inkers, professional writers, you know, 
hundreds of dollars per page. But if you sit down and do the math, they could have probably worked it out differently, especially when you're talking of the fact that they also have international sales and international deals, uh, digital uh, plus when they wrap it all up at the end and they put it out in um, in trades and such. Um, it's one of these things where the math can be a little rough. I don't know all the num their numbers, obviously. So you can get close, but you're never going to be exact. There's no way to do it. But yeah, so if you ever need to price a book, Watch out for your core costs and just uh, price accordingly. Um, so that's it for today, and I will see. I'll be talking to you guys soon. Thank you and have a great day.